This lab is going to go over the evidence for a chemical reaction. The lab itself is called the Phenol Red Lab. Please make sure you go ahead and copy down any of the yellow pieces of information into your lab notebook. Please also make sure you write any questions you have in the margin. There are four clues that let you know a chemical reaction is taking place, and we'll discuss each of those clues shortly. First is gas formation solid formation called the precipitate, energy change either given off or absorbed, and finally a color change. Go ahead and pause it and copy those four down and then we'll talk about each of them. The first is gas formation. When you drop two Alka-Seltzer tablets like these in, the, in water and they start bubbling, that's let, that lets you know that a new gas is being produced. That's a piece of evidence that a chemical reaction is probably taking place. Photosynthesis, like you learned about in seventh grade science, where a plant takes light energy and carbon dioxide and produces sugar and oxygen. It's another production of oxygen is another piece of evidence that gas is being formed, that a chemical reaction is taking place. And when you burn things as well, carbon dioxide is giving off evidence. Precipitate is when you have two liquids that when you mix them together form a solid. So you can see in both of these examples you have clear liquids that once they're formed together are creating solids. If you were to let these sit for a while the solids would actually settle out along the bottom and you could very clearly see that you have formed a precipitate. Energy change. During a chemical reaction it'll either give off energy and heat or it'll absorb energy and heat. And so here's two common examples of that. Um, a chemical ice pack that uses chemicals that once you mix those chemicals gets very cold um, is an example of a chemical reaction. Hand warmers that you might use in a really cold climate, like when Mr. Nussel was living in Alaska, or when you go snowboarding to keep your hands or your feet warm, are an example of chemical reactions that give off heat and release energy. Again, energy change is a piece of evidence that a chemical reaction is taking place. Finally, color change. So you can see with these leaves over time they change color from the green to a red to a brown. That's evidence that chemical reaction is taking place. If you take genes and you put bleach on them, you can see that the color in the genes quite clearly changes. That's another evidence that a chemical reaction has taken place. The key thing that has happened in a chemical reaction is a new substance has been produced. So the four pieces of evidence let you know and help you determine whether that's happening or not. Two final examples, liquid ice melting, excuse me, water ice melting to liquid water is not a chemical reaction because it's always water, it's just in a different form. Burning a match, however, takes the wood and creates carbon dioxide and many other substances. You're making new substances, that is a chemical reaction. The basic safety guidelines that you need for this lab are as follows. Definitely make sure before you start any lab that you read the lab instructions and listen carefully to, to the safety concerns before you begin each lab. Ask any questions if you're unsure of what to do. Make sure you're wearing your safety goggles at all time when you're around the chemicals. Act calmly and appropriately in the lab. Follow the safety guidelines and report any accidents or injuries immediately to your teacher. Please respectfully make sure that the other members in your lab group are also following the safety instructions. Please do not allow someone else to do something that would endanger themselves or others. And finally, please make sure you follow the specific safety instructions for each lab as they're given and the general guidelines that you learn from the beginning of the year. For the Phenol Red Lab, there's a number of specifics that you need to be aware of. First is please make sure you wear your goggles at all times, especially when cleaning up chemicals have a chance of splashing up into your eyes the most when you're actually rinsing them off in the sink and the test tube off in the sink so please make sure you have your goggles on anytime you're around the chemicals. The chemical calcium chloride CaCl2 is an irritant meaning if you get it on your skin and you leave it on your skin for a long time it will irritate your skin you'll get what looks to be like a mild sunburn. Um, please make sure you wash your hands when you're done with this lab and if you do happen to get some calcium chloride on your skin please make sure you wash your, your hands immediately. It's not an incredible irritant, it's not something you need to freak out about if you get on there, but you don't want to leave it on there um, and you do want to make sure you have your goggles on. 
finally, phenol red can stain your clothes. So be sure to wear your goggles and please keep it off your clothes. If it does get on your clothes, see your teacher so they can help you um, see if they can't help you rinse it out. Please report any accidents immediately to your teacher, as always, and please make sure you ask any questions before starting the lab. Now we'll go ahead and get into the specifics of what you'll be doing in the lab. All right, you'll notice in this lab you have a number of things in your bucket. First is calcium chloride. It's a white round substance made into white round pellets. Remember, calcium chloride is an irritant. So if you get it on your skin, you want to wash it off. Um, it's not so strong an irritant that you have to freak out, but you do want to go ahead and wash it off um, and definitely make sure you wash your hands when you're done. Second solid is sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. And then you have a liquid. The liquid you'll be working with is phenol red. This is not food coloring. Never eat or drink in the lab. You'll also find in your lab a test tube and a Ziploc bag. What you'll need to do, as it says in the instructions, is go ahead and open up your Ziploc bag. Take one level teaspoon of calcium chloride, one level teaspoon of the baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. Notice I'm using the teaspoons that are in the containers. I'm not switching them. You don't want to contaminate them. Okay, and then you can set your bag off to the side for a second. The next step, you want to go ahead and fill up your test tube with the phenol red. You'll notice that I'm doing this over the um, bucket so that if I have a spill, I can just rinse out the bucket. Or it's slowly, so hopefully it doesn't spill, but if it does, just wash your hands. Now the key part of this lab is we don't want the reaction to start until we're all set. So what you want to do is you want to set the test tube inside, but do not allow it to spill. And go ahead and squish out the air. It helps if you have your lab partner help you. So that there's as little air in there as possible. And then seal up the, the bag with the test tube inside. At this point, you're ready to go ahead and, and do the lab. So to see what happens with this chemical reaction, just go ahead and tip the test tube over. You can shake the bag back and forth um, and definitely observe. You should be looking for the signs of a chemical reaction. Um, go ahead and feel the bottom of the, the bag as well. When you are totally done, let your teacher know and they will give you further instructions about how to clean up, but do make sure you leave your goggles on the entire time you're doing this lab. If you have any questions, be sure to ask your teacher.